I absolutely back quiet quitting. So for the camera, quiet quitting is okay if, here we go, the caveat, the, the key word, if, you are disrespected, you aren't valued, you are spoken down to. If you are the cleaner and the boss or the senior manager talks to you like shit, it's not acceptable. Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. As you can probably tell, I have somewhat lost my voice. Before it is completely gone, let me introduce you to this week's guest, Aaron Knightley. Aaron is an investor, TikToker, and business owner, having founded the Breakup Program and Peak Performance events. We talk about quiet quitting, becoming financially literate, and escaping the nine to five. Here is Aaron Knightley. If you were the owner and I was the cleaner and you came up to me and said, right, do that, I'd go, who the fuck are you? If I was me, I was financially empowered and I'd be thinking, I'm fucking earning more money than you anyway and you don't even know it. Do not talk to me like that. So, and, I, and because uh, when the respect is lost, you'll see a different side of me, like I'll change. And with quiet quitting, if you are being disrespected, you are not valued, you're not appreciated, you're overworked, and you're not spoken to like shit, why would you not quiet quit? Like, you're going to lose yourself as a human being. You lose a backbone. No one ever spoke down to me in the workplace, which is why when we had these meetings and why a lot of these clips end up getting millions is because when I would sit in a meeting and there would be this roundhouse, I'd be the last one to talk. I was fully aware and learned very quickly, be the last one to speak to whether to speak or not. And if I didn't agree with something, if new changes were coming in, I am that guy that went, no, I'm not doing that. And it'd be, oh, Aaron, why? Oh, I'm not doing that. You sh and I, I pointed at one of my old managers and said, you should be doing that. I said, why is that now rolling onto us when that is your role? And where were you last night for three hours on shift? Because you disappeared. I said this to one of our managers. And she said, it's got nothing to do with you. I was doing my No, 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 no. And I went, no, no, no. Where were you yesterday for three hours? You disappeared off site. So why is this role now being given to us? Because I had money in the bank to leave at any point. I could go, do you know what? Fuck this, I'm off. Mm -hmm. and I could get off and leave. No one else can do that because they're all like, oh, I'll do it, you know, I'll do it, yeah, I'll do it because I need to pay my mortgage. And I used to think, fucking start saving your money and get rid of your finance car that you keep turning up in. Aaron, why do you drive a little KA? You know, I used to drive my little KA to work. No one knew a thing. And I used to think, stop financing your Audi for 600 <laughs> quid. Stop putting that in the bank. And then maybe when you get spoken down to by this little graduate squirt, you might have a backbone to say, who the fuck are you talking to? Show some damn respect, boy. You know, it's stuff like that. But people won't speak up. I would always speak up. I mean, no one said a fucking word to me. Um, well, it comes, back, it comes back down to that independence and freedom, which is massively the financial freedom. Yes. Because when you have financial freedom, then you have options and you can have much stronger boundaries because you're not afraid of losing something because yeah. of the way that you're being treated. And I think that's the problem, the pain point that you are kind of leaning into on your social media is this idea of, look, you know, you can be in an, you can be employed and you're treated well, you know, you're getting promoted, you know, even looking elsewhere, getting another job elsewhere. But if you're in a position where you're afraid to lose that job for fear of losing your income, mm -hmm. then of course you're going to be constantly in a position of, you're not going to be in a position of power because anyone can fire you at any point. Yeah. And then what are you going to do? Uh, so, do, do you know something that's really scary? 43 million working adults hate their job. That was a survey done. 17, it's something like 17% increase in the last year in depression due to workplace issues. You know, people are going home and falling out with their partners and not talking to their kids because, especially men, um, they don't tell their wives, you know, I'm really unhappy in the workplace. They, they bottle it up and they're going home and they're arguing with their wives and the wives are thinking, why are you arguing with me over nothing? It's because they're struggling in the workplace, but they don't want to raise it. And it's because over a period of time, they're being spoken to like crap, bullied, harassed. And, and they don't speak up. I've worked with guys, big burly men, six foot four. They don't say a fucking word to some of these little squirts, male or female. They don't say a word. You know, I've been in, I was in one meeting and they had this little dongle thing um, and it was like a regional meeting. And this guy started screaming at one of the managers. And I was looking at the manager thinking, fucking say something, or I'm going to say something. Fucking say something. Stand up, stand up for yourself. Jesus Christ, you are the guy who would watch an old lady be pushed down the road. Speak up for yourself. And I was thinking, what situation are you in 
financially or at home, that you are not saying, enough, enough. No one, what, what, because he's on 80 grand a year, he gets to talk to you like that. Jesus Christ, have a backbone, man. So that's where I'm like, people, come on, let's get some empowerment. Let's not buy the Gucci slides. Let's not buy the Rolex. Let's not go out to the Ivy because you can't fucking afford it. Have you got an emergency fund? No. Right, well, that's why you're losing a backbone and you're now depressed and you're taking out your family because you've been shit with money. So, it, you know, so I really try when I speak with people on a one-to-one -one or I'm doing a live stream, people, let's get the money right. Because when you get the money right, you feel good and you're like, oh, I can breathe, right? Uh, don't talk to me like that. Why? But because one, I can financially cover myself. I can go get legal advice and we can have a battle here and I can cover myself for the period that we're going to battle and I will win against you. You know, it, it really frustrates me because people do lose themselves and, and, you know, and it can lead to suicide and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and men are a sucker for bottling it up and, and then divorces happen and it was all because of the workplace. Shocking. I think you're right about having to open up those conversations because it's true that bottling it up is certainly not helpful and men particularly so don't do that. And then it's a snowball effect on everything in your life. Yeah. And it boils down to also that financial literacy because I think that's something that, you know, now we have social media, we can talk about it, we can go and be proactive and learn about it elsewhere. But it's not something that is in the educational system at all. I know it certainly has not been in mine. And I don't know why I got to, you know, I was always very good with money and managed to get myself out of sticky situations, make my own money, make good choices where I worked, you know, and progress. Um, but not everybody, not everybody is like that. And it's not easily available or it's not easily digestible. And I think different people respond to information about the finances in different ways, like how men learn it, how women learn it. It's very, very different. So what do you think will help people to get that financial literacy? I think there's so much free resources. I think it, it starts with the want. Like you have to want it, you know, you can't convince someone to change their situation. So it has to be a natural want and a desire. But look, there's so much free information, you know, there's, there are YouTube videos, there are podcasts, there's, you know, there are incredible books, you know, one for recommendation, which was written by a very good friend of mine is called How to Own the World by Andrew Craig. He's been in Congress, he's moved $7.6 billion in layman terms. That book is one of the best financial books um, in terms of understanding money management and investing in layman terms without confusing it. That, so you've, but you've got to have the want and like you have to have a pain point. Like for me, it was... Aaron, why have you looked after your money so much? Because I do not want to be here anymore. Like, so my first step and my want is get my money right. And I'm then in a position, um, if I need to leave, I can leave. Like I now have options. If, if you don't provide yourself with those options and make sacrifices, you get caught in this rut. You know, I used to work with some great people, um, but you know, too, too frequently they'd go, oh, I can't wait to book my holiday and get away from here. And I just, honestly, I used to think, why don't you design a life that you don't have to escape? Mm -hmm. Why are you going on holiday to escape? You know, I book a holiday now because I want to go away and then I can't wait to come back. <laughs> you know, uh, or, or they'll, it's the last two days of their holiday and they're going, oh, I can't go back to work. Then why don't you change it? Like, if you don't like it, dude, or lady or whoever, why aren't you actively changing it? Well, you know, it's too hard. Mm -hmm. No, that's a lack of information. Go learn. Do you think it's because people get used to a lifestyle? Because I, my, my circle for a while has been, you know, pretty successful people who, you know, a lot of them work in finance, earning a really good salary, but still feel like they're poor mm. and very unhappy with the, you know, the working situation, long hours, very little respect, having to drop your life, going on holiday and not actually a ho having a holiday because you're having to be on the phone. So... Or from the outside, you know, great cars, you know, great, you know, flats. They seem to have it all, but deeply, deeply unhappy. Mm. So, like, what is that? I think, so I know a lot of old school kind of big salary stuff like that, but they do 70, 80 hours, 90 hours, a lot of stress, always on call. You know, and they're very happy to turn around to people who they meet and say, you know, I'm, I'm this and I, you know, I have this on Chelsea, and it's all right. You know, it's like no one gives a shit. Mm -hmm. No one fucking cares about your title. We're not impressed, you know, don't impress me much, or whatever those Shania Twain, right? <laughs> um, no one fucking cares is the mm -hmm. first thing. Yes, they get used to a lifestyle, but again, it's like there's, there's that 
there's that defining moment. I, I even felt it. I never bought into it, but I felt it. When you start earning more, there's this like, oh, I could go buy that. There's like a little bit of a, but then that's the start of it. You buy it and then there's something else. I think then, it happens you know, before. Like, you know, you've got that bonus coming in. You know that got commission coming yes, in. Yes, that can and be dangerous. And you spent it. Yes. Even before you got it. Some people do. I've never done that. I, I learned the hard way. I used to, I, I remember doing it once, um, but now it's mm. always until it hits the bank. But there, there is that period of, oh, I'm earning more, I could spend more. And it's controlling that. So uh, again, Jason, I'm giving you loads of shout outs here. But also Jason is a, a, a big believer and someone that I really adopted the method and I was already doing it. I live a very lean financial life. And, and I think when people are in big corporate jobs, uh, you're sucked. Like you're at a high level, you're competing at a high level. There are people on your toes and biting for that job because there's only very far and few now. You're earning 300 grand gross a year. You're taking maybe 170 tops, 160. You're doing 80 hours. You're stressed to the high heavens. A lot of them are on depressants and can't get out of it. High outgoings, bought a flat in London, bought a house in London, got the Aston, got the Porsche. You're fucked. Mm. Uh, and it's very hard to then go to your family. Um, we're going to have to strip back. We're going to have to go move just on the outskirts, little two bed, semi-detached. Going to have to drop down to an electric Hyundai. The wife might be like, it's not happening. Oh, my God, you're not worth it anymore. Or the guy might, you know, whatever. And then it's a real job. Pride for a man, if, if we're talking about a man here, a lot of it, right? Whereas now, if you live a lean lifestyle, we, are, we have this ability to build a lifestyle business. Maximum profit from your phone and your laptop, huge income, very little outgoings. I'm on about a 98% profit margin, 2% expenditure. I barely spend anything. I'm sitting here in Primark. I've got Next jeans on. Um, I've got some feeler socks on or whatever, <laughs> right? My clothing. Uh, I wear my Apple Watch everywhere. I make very good money. I spend nothing. And so I live a very lean lifestyle. So someone who's earning 300K in a salary, I would never swap that. Mm. I'd always choose my life. Always. So how did you manage to avoid getting sucked into keeping up with the Joneses? Because, I mean, it's, it's part of our human nature to want to be similar to other people. And how did you manage to, as I said, get sucked in? Uh, because I, I've always wanted longevity. Like, I knew that it could end at any moment. Like, I would never rely just on content creation. Like, I earn extremely good money just off of TikTok. Um, more than, probably more, nearly more than a doctor. That's just, but, but I know that's not always going to last. It's like an actor or an actress. You're going to be hot for one moment, then you're not. So you have to build something sustainable. So I've always put myself, again, going back to a bit of an old soul kind of situation, I've always imagined, uh, imagined 20 years down the line, I've got a good private pension, uh, my stocks and shares is good, my stocks and shares ice is, is good, uh, my commodities, my peer-to-peer -peer lending, my, pri my private in invest now. So I've, I've made decisions over the last 12 years as if I was a 50-year-old man, <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. so I've planned for when I'm 50. Like, I want like you've reversed engineered it as yeah. what you said before. So I haven't mm. spent money up front to pretend. Like I have a dear friend who's gonna remortgage his house so he can have a marble kitchen because his wife won't fucking sell the house because <laughs> she got inheritance which bought the house in the begin with. Um but but she won't sell. So they wanted to remortgage. He's gonna he's gonna have to work. Like he's he's incredibly stressed, right? He's a very dear friend of mine, but he is stressed to the high heavens. He earns a good salary, but he's committed now for like until he's dead. You know, and, and all because his wife won't sell. If they were to sell, they could go buy a couple of properties outright, live in a nice little house and not work. But she wants this marble kitchen because she wants people to come around and go, what do you think of my marble kitchen? Isn't this nice? Isn't this nice? You know, but the problem is people come around and go, oh, yeah, lovely marble kitchen. And when they leave and go home, they don't fucking care. Mm -hmm. So it's this, it's this portraying a lifestyle, but I've just never wanted to keep up with anyone. Which, again, which is also why I don't think I suffer from any mental health issues because mm -hmm. I'm only in my own little bubble. Mm -hmm. like, I'll leave here and, you know, I'll just walk along and I'm happy as Larry. You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. If you love listening to these inspiring leadership stories from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe or follow wherever you are listening. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next episode.